Okay, guys, I'm gonna. Uh, it's been a while. So I, tomorrow I think makes three months that I got this thing. Okay, so. Um, I actually put a couple other videos up after and deleted some of them because they were just really stupid and I was like, that wasn't helpful to anybody, right? But let me just show you guys. So 48.3 hours, 562 miles total. So, um, man, and, and uh, so I, I've also been checking my oil changes. I have, so I did the 100 miles, right, and then changed the oil. I have 443 hours or miles, sorry, on this oil. Um, it has not burned a drop of oil in that period of time. The oil looks really good still. So, okay, what can I tell you to stay on topic here? Okay. Guys, I'm super happy with the machine. Really happy with the machine. Um, I, like I've had, I've learned how to take care of it and maintain it, right? Like. So for example, I'll let you guys see me here for a sec. When I first bought it, when you when you would start to take off, you'd almost hear like a clanky sound, you know? And it almost sounded like it was coming from the drive shaft, like that went to the front uh, wheels. Turns out, like, so these are dry clutches, right? Like I've, I've learned so much about this thing and about these machines. Dry clutches by nature, are loud it's everything i've read everything i've studied up on like i've been in my buddy side by sides too his maverick and he has that clanky sound as well when he first starts to take off but then once like the once the secondary clutch engages like all the wing catches it's gone it doesn't make that sound anymore right but that's just the nature of dry clutches probably going to get slammed with someone disagreeing with me but that's, that's what it is, right? So that metal clinking sound bothered me at first, but it's normal. <laughs> um, you, I put, of that 562 miles, probably about 150 of that are on the uh, street, and the rest are on those mountains you see over there. Um, I, I live in Bountiful area, and so you know we went up, we went up there, went up to Skyline Drive, and then you can come out way over there, up above um, Farmington Canyon Lagoon. And you know that, that, I mean, that's a pretty big trip. We haven't done it yet because it's still closed, but we go as far back as we can and then come back, right? But this thing is solid, I'm telling you. I've had this thing in, I've, I've driven this thing through puddles constantly. I got my winch on, which by the way, guys, do not pay, in my opinion, don't pay for them to install, like, if, don't get the LE. Unless you want the windows. Like, okay, the window on the roof are solid. But this is the Champion winch. And I like it because, yeah, you have to have the, the cords, these, these, the power cords that go back to the uh, battery. But you don't have to have that other messy setup where you have to take this out and plug it in and put a button right here because... The Champion one I bought has the remote on it, the wireless remote, which yeah, may, maybe that's dangerous if it doesn't work, right? But because it's wireless, um, I just attach this baby right here. This is the thing. I put it back here, attach it to the battery, and that's what controls my, my winch. Every time after I ride it, I take this out, take off the pre-filter, the bigger filter, and I lightly just tap it out, get all the dust out, blow it out very lightly from the inside. I think that'll maintain, I think that'll keep my engine life going forever. Personally, another problem I had, it was really like ticking me off, right? Shifter cable right here. This is on the passenger side. To adjust it, you need to loosen this nut and basically, you know, bring this one back up and tighten it. But it was actually all the way down here. I think over time, over the 500 and something miles, it shifted great, right? And then occasionally, you'd like, you'd back up, go in reverse, and put it into high. And it would make you want to just die. Because it's. I, I, once I put it into high, I slowly tap on the gas to make sure I'm actually in gear. And occasionally, it'd start to go, then, like, get out of gear, and you'd hear, like, a clank, you know, and that, like, made me want to die inside. <laughs> So I set it up on it, and yeah, it was just the cable needed to get adjusted, is all it was. So this actually had slid down all the way to the bottom. There's no threads visible. So I, I, I tie in, uh, loosen this one, put it back up, and now I have three or four threads on the bottom, and it shifts beautifully now. No problems whatsoever. If y'all ever want 
more storage space. This is just a four wheeler um, cargo pack, you know, for the back. But I got coolant, oil, uh, plug kit, some more oil right there. And then I got one of these is full of tie down straps and something else. But this is the way to go for extra storage. I actually don't have anything in this compartment back here. Uh, I, I could see so yeah, I have all that still though if I want to do that. So, but guys, like 